Hello and welcome to In The Lab. Now we have another question and answer session for you. I'm Mr Walker and this is my guest presenter. Hi, I'm Ben Forrest. I'm a student here at Keynes and I'm in Stephen Stewart. So without further ado, let's get on with the questions. Question number one, Ben, what is it? Why do we only see an out of our pupil of our eye? Right, so why do we only see out of the pupil? Well, there is an easy answer to this. There's a picture coming on the screen right now and it shows a cross section of the eye. Now you might notice that there's only a tiny gap on the far left hand side. That gap between the iris above and the iris below is the pupil. Your pupil quite literally is a hole. So why do we only see through the pupil? Because you can't see through the iris, you can't see through any of the other bits. Light has to enter through the hole. So that's why we only see through it, because it's the only bit that is literally a hole. Now why can't we just have the whole front of the eye open so it's one big hole and we'd see loads of stuff instead of just what comes in through the hole? Well, the answer is, if too much light came into the eye, we'd just be overloaded with light. We need our pupil so that the iris around the pupil can get smaller and get bigger and control the amount of light. It can contract and relax and it stops too much light getting in and obviously we can make the pupil bigger in low light conditions and therefore we can get more light in. So it allows us to control the amount of light in so it's not too much and we get just the right amount. Okay, next question Ben, question number two. What is photosynthesis? Oh, what is photosynthesis? Well, for this, I need the help of my assistant. Could you pass me the plant, please, helpful assistant? Thank you very much. Now, this here is a plant. This photosynthesizes. We don't photosynthesize, we respire. That means that we use oxygen and we make carbon dioxide. This little plant here, when it photosynthesizes, it takes in all the carbon dioxide that we make and it makes oxygen. The whole process is a bit more complicated than that, but I'm just focusing on the gases that are made. Photosynthesis is very important. You can see there's a cycle there. What we release, the plant takes in. What the plant pushes out, we take in. So there's a nice cycle. We need plants. Photosynthesis is extremely important. Now, there's another thing that a plant makes. I'm gonna put you on the spot. What else does a plant produce in photosynthesis? Mm. Tough on this. Does it provide energy or? Oh, it, it uses energy. It uses the sun's energy to convert carbon dioxide and it uses water that it takes up in its roots from the soil and it makes oxygen, which we need, what else does it make? What do you think? Food. It does make food. And what do we call that particular food? What do we say in that equation? I'll put it up on the screen in a moment. The whole one begins with G. It's a type of sugar. Is it coming? Some people no. watching are going, we know it, we know it. It's glucose. It's glucose. So you can see on the screen there is the big word equation there for exactly what happens in photosynthesis. So that is what it is. Now, if we take the word photosynthesis, you can see it on the screen there, we can separate it out into photo and also synthesis. Now then, Ben, here's a chance to redeem yourself. What does photo mean? What does that bit of the word mean? Light. It does mean light. Photo literally means light. A photograph is a graph or a map of something that you make using light. That's what a photograph is. Photosynthesis does use light, it uses sunlight. What does synthesis mean? If you were to synthesize something, what does that mean? It, it's made from, it's made. You're there, you've got it. It's made from. Yeah, that's enough, that's it. To synthesize something means to make it. So photosynthesis literally means you make something using light. And that's exactly what we just described the plant does. It uses light to make oxygen and to make its own food, glucose. We can't do that, we're dependent on these lovely little plants which are dependent on the sun, which means indirectly we're dependent on the sun, but we need the sun and the plant for our food and for the gas that we breathe. 
So that's what photosynthesis is. Okay. Now then, question number three, our last question for now. How does Isaac Newton get gravity? How does Isaac Newton get gravity? I'm guessing, and I think you might agree then, this question probably means how did he discover gravity? You yeah. reckon? Yeah. Probably. Do you know the answer to this? How did he discover gravity? Um, he was sitting he was sitting under an apple tree yeah. and an apple fell on his head. That is it. That is pretty much it. And from there he developed the amazing theory of gravity. Now I need the help of my helpful helper again. So would you like to hand me the apple? We're calling this an apple. Yes, it's a tennis ball, but for the purposes of this video, it is an apple. Um, can you be Isaac Newton and sit on this chair for me? All right. Here's Isaac Newton. He was asleep or he was pondering his books or, I don't know, he might have been playing on Nintendo or something, I don't know. But he was doing something under the tree, under this apple tree. Are you ready? Yeah. You know what's coming. Suddenly, oh no, an apple landed on his head and he thought, what caused that? What was the point of that? I was just minding my own business. And he realised that when two things have mass, they are drawn towards each other. And he realised that if something has a massive mass, like the Earth, and something has a tiny mass, like the apple, then the apple is going to be drawn towards the Earth much more than the Earth is going to be drawn towards the apple. And so the force of gravity pulls that apple down. He then applied that to the planets as well. And he realised that if the Sun is massive and has gravity, and the planets all have gravity, then that gravity is what keeps those planets in the orbit around the Sun. And because of his discovery about gravity, space travel became possible. We're absolutely dependent on his ideas to get rockets up, to get them around planets, to get them back again, all based on, very simply, the theory of gravity from Isaac Newton. So it is extremely important indeed. Now before we finish, you can stand up again, Ben, because we have the killer question. <laughs> Sounds a bit like that, but not that much, just a bit. <laughs>